Good evening. Today we will be talking about the relationship between Islam and Christianity in India. Islam's entrance into India took centuries. It was brought there by Arabs, Persians, and eventually Turks. The two ways that Islam entered India was by sea and then by land. The Arabs and Persians had thriving sea trade with India. They established communities all along the coast, bringing with them an Islam that was cultured, sophisticated, and cosmopolitan. In fact, it was even considered good fortune to be the neighbor of a Muslim. Later, the Turks would conquer large portions of northern India by land. Beginning in the early 1000s, they ruled from the mouth of the Indus to the mouth of the Ganges for about 800 years. By 1930, one in four Indians was Muslim. That's about 70 million people. Islam quickly became India's second largest religion, behind Hinduism. At that time, there were more Muslims in Bengal, which is highlighted there on the map, than in all Arabia, Turkey, and Persia combined. Christianity in India dates back to Thomas, one of Jesus' twelve apostles. There was already a well-established and functioning church by the time Islam began entering the vast land. But there were so few converts from Islam to Christianity that those who did convert were called trophies of grace. Two notable examples are Sheikh Salih Abdul Masih and Malvi Imad Ad-Dun. Abdul Masih was born to a devout Muslim family in Delhi. He became a respected Muslim scholar at a young age. However, while on a visit to Kampur, he met the Anglican missionary Henry Martin and became a friend of his. After a while, he converted to Christianity. He began traveling around India and inviting Muslims of all social statuses to discuss religion. Under his influence, about 50 Muslims were converted and baptized. Mulvi Imad descended from a family of Muslim scholars in the Punjab region. He was trained in the traditions of high Islamic learning and became an Islamic preacher. He was well known for his anti-Christian rhetoric, aggravating already tense relations between local ulema, or Muslim religious scholars, and Christian missionaries. Later, he became disillusioned with Islam and was ready to abandon all faith. But instead, this doubt led him to an intensive study of Urdu Christian scriptures and writings, which in turn led him to Christ. He then dedicated himself to being a Christian witness to the Muslim community. His writings went deeper than the typical missionary theology of that time. He explored the depths of the different religious traditions in India, providing the Indian Christians with fresh understanding and excellent scholarship. Sadly, even with the examples of Henry Martin, Abdul Masih, and Malvi Imad, Christian work among, Mus among Muslims in India has been neglected. Samuel Zwimmer, the great apostle to Islam, spent some time in India strengthening believers and interacting with local Muslims, though with little qualitative success. He noticed, however, the extreme disregard among missionaries of that land for the Muslim population. Resources were not being directed that way, and neither were was the manpower. Uh, very few people were willing to go to this tough population. However, he considered India to be the greatest Muslim mission field because of its population, neglect, and opportunity. Indian Muslims experienced a great de degree of religious and social freedom, especially compared with, with Muslims in other countries. Zwimmer hoped that many could be persuaded to accept Christ because of this freedom. If they did, he thought that they would strengthen the church in India as steel strengthens concrete. This was because of their already strong belief in one God, personal sin, and a day of judgment. Zwimmer was optimistic about the future of India, and specifically about the future of Christian work among Muslims in India. I will end my presentation with a quote from him that I think really sums up the desire to see Muslims in India come to know Christ. He said, For Jesus Christ and not Muhammad will finally wear the crown of all India. For this we pray, hope, and toil.